confusing. So it's actually confusing. So the system is having its ups and downs. So hence, that's why sometimes you can even log in or even navigate some of the tabs on that particular um, website. So you have to bear with us. Uh, it's that's the system. So because now, uh, because the system is is new, so they're still trying to figure out some of the things. So for now, it's gonna be a problem. So I was just passing those instructions uh, from uh, Prof. Knobel. Um, I'm going to just start this uh, presentation then so that we can, for the uh, for the interest of time, just uh, run through it. It's not supposed to take longer because it's just gonna be and it's just going to be an overview of uh, units one and two. So let me just um, share the screen and then we take and then we move as quick as possible. Can you see my slide? Yes, Mr. Kutu, we can see your slide. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, uh, the other thing is this, this, uh, this slide it can be available if the students um, feel that they need it, but uh, this one is actually mine. But uh, I have the one from Prof Knobel because she she prepared this presentation. So because of the fact that she did it her way and then we had this crisis of uh, having to, you know, like um, adjust because of her family issue now, I decided to use mine that I presented a couple of weeks, a uh, uh, couple of months ago uh, in the previous uh, semester, uh, the previous academic year. So I'm just going to use mine and then uh, if if ever you feel that you need like mine and then uh, as well as the one of uh, Prof Knobel, it's still fine. So even if you want mine only, it's still fine. So uh, uh, the student will let us know and then we'll take it from there. Uh, Let's start with unit one. Unit one, the most important thing that you want you to look at are the definitions. These definitions, they're very much important because in the entire uh, um, module, you will now, you have to know this this uh, concept so that you will be, so that you'll be able to now relate to what is it that, that the module is about. So the first one is, it's the legal, uh, subject. So the legal subject is either a natural or a legal or juristic person. So when you talk about uh, natural person, then you're talking about uh, uh, human beings, me and you. And then when you're talking about legal uh, or juristic person, then you're talking about you know companies, you know like uh, government entities, government departments, you know as well as you know like religious institutions. So for long it's not a human being then we call it a legal or a juristic person. And now another concept that you need to know is the is the legal object. So legal object is um it's an object that a legal person has a recognized legal relationship. So basically like once we have something you as a legal person then uh once we have a certain relationship with a certain object you know that that particular object, then we call it legal. Oh, it's called a legal object, uh, and then there are different types of um, legal objects. The first one is uh, the thing, performance, immaterial property, as well as um, personality property. So I think for an extensive, you know, like reading, go to the study guide. I think I've I've already. Seen. I've also put the page number there in the uh, study guide, and then we have something called a legal relationship. This one is also very much important because this one, it's a uh, look. This one is actually going to now. It's it's talking about the relationship between the legal subject as well as the legal object. So in this particular uh, definition of a legal relationship, we are talking about a relationship between legal subjects and an object so basically it's a matter of it's is the um it is the relationship between the person and what that particular person has in that particular relationship then there's there is uh two relationships now uh 
I mean, within that particular legal relationship, the first one is what you call a legal. Uh, it's called a, a subject object relationship, meaning the relationship between the person as well as the thing. And then you have the second one that is called subject subject relationship. So meaning that if you have a thing, then we are like you are like um, legal subjects are expected to now, um, you know, respect the relationship that you have. So basically, uh, in terms of the legal, uh, the the subject subject relationship, you uh, uh, you as a legal subject, you are now expected to respect the the uh, the uh, subject object relationship. So if you're talking about a real relationship, then you're talking about uh, those two relationships between the subject object relationship as well as the subject subject relationship. So um, I hope uh, you're going to understand this particular definition because it's also very much important because basically that's more of the essence of um, property law. And then um, in terms of those relationship, the best page to look at in the in the in the guide is uh, page 13. So in those uh, in uh, in the uh, in the uh, legal relationship, the only uh, um, only lawful relationship such as ownership and lawful uh, uh, ownership, they 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 confer what is called legal uh, so a real right. So I think uh, we're gonna discuss the real right in uh, unit two. Um, now, in terms of uh, uh, different types of uh, real relationships, then we have the one called uh, the one is the first one is ownership. Ownership, it is always legal, and then it is, and then it confers real right. The second one is we have the uh, something called uh, holdership. So basically, in in terms of the holdership, the person is in physical control of the thing with the intention to derive benefit. The third one is called possession. So the the possession is it's now um, position is always always unlawful, and then I'll try to explain this thing. Uh, uh, but now the extensive uh, um, discussion thereof is is in study unit eight. But what is going to happen is let's say uh, just to make an overview of uh, of uh, what is uh, a holdership. Basically, the, there is a relationship between the legal subject and the object that that person is holding, right? So, for example, if your friend borrowed you a phone or pen or whatever, then you are, that one is called holdership because you are in physical control and then you are now going to uh, look, you are now deriving, look, you are, because of the fact that you are in possession now, you have the intention to derive the benefit. So basically, you are now going to use it. So in this case, then you can have, uh, those examples can be the pledge, the use of fractuary, the list. Like once you are having something with the permission of the owner, then you are what you call a holder. So once we have that, that permission, then it means we have a real right. However, like there are those instances where in uh, um, that that look, um, uh, you had a you have an object, but now uh, it can look it can later on transpire that uh, it is uh, that particular uh, uh, holdership. Then it's no longer um, lawful. So um, under this holdership, then we have uh, well, like what you call um, bona fide holders, and then you have the one that you call uh, mala fide holders. So the difference between the two is, I'm just gonna try to use an example to say you had, you, look, your friend gave you that uh, that um, car to use. So instead of you trying to return it, so basically, when you had that that particular um, um, car, because you had the permission, then uh, uh, once the once like once the that that friend says, please bring back my car, but but now you don't want to, 
then you know like it's not going to fall into the issue of um of um of uh, of um body call um um uh, but now if ever you for example uh you know like drove the car thinking that you have the permission you know like uh the issue felt, look the issue here is just a matter of uh in terms of the malafide one is the one who knows that does not have that permission and then that one of um bona fide that's the one that who thought they had the permission so malafide is you know that you don't have the that particular permission but the bona fide is the one that where you thought you had the permission uh, I'm going to talk about this one of uh, possession. Possession, like I said, it's actually very, look, it's, it's, it's unlawful. So the, the person is, is, is in physical control of the thing. And then he has the intention of an owner. So basically, the perfect example of this one is going to be the thief. The person who took somebody else's property. And then and, and that particular person is actually having the Look, the intention of an owner. So, however, that, that that particular property is going to be used, that particular person is having the intention to use that particular property with an intention of an owner. So, because of the fact that the, that particular thief that did not have the consent, then there is no way that a real right can be conf uh, uh, can be can be uh, conferred to that particular person. So, uh, look, like I said, Sarah. Discussion is actually in uh, unit eight. Uh, and then uh, I have this one called uh, like there's this. I made mention of the this thing called a real right. So in terms of real right, real right, uh, if you look in page 14 of the study guide, it says it's a real relationship between the legal subject and the legal object. And then that relationship is now conf it now uh, confers the legal subject with a direct control over a thing, right? So that is that is that that is the first part of of that particular uh, relationship. So the look uh, the legal subject is having you know a thing, and then because of that particular relationship, now uh, that uh, that uh, legal subject can now have direct control over the thing. So like I said a couple of minutes ago, that is what we call uh, subject object relationship. And then we have the second relationship again, that is the uh, subject subject relationship. Like I said, there then you have the relationship between two legal subjects. And then one of the legal subjects is supposed to respect the subject object relationship. Now, uh, once we have a real right, there are certain there are certain entitlements that are that are now are going to be attached to that particular right. So in this case, the the most comprehensive uh, uh, real right is going to be the uh, look uh, ownership. So there, then you so because you have got certain entitlements, then you can perform certain acts with respect to that particular thing or the object. Those entitlements they include to control to use, enjoy, you know, like, and then those other various rights. If you can go to page uh, 14 and 15 of the guide, then you will uh, get extensive um, discussion also there. Then we have some, uh, the concept called a thing. A thing is, um, a thing, like I said previously, a thing is a legal object but but now this definition not Mr. Kutu Mr. Kutu we've lost sound Lucia, can you, can you please switch off your camera? Maybe that's why it's a bit disturbing the professor.
please switch off your video, ma'am. Ms. Masibuko, can you switch off your video, please? Thank you. I'm sorry for the inconvenience cause students. Um, it appears as if Mr. Kuto has network problems. So if you could just wait for a few minutes, it would be appreciated. Thank you. Students, Mr. Kutu informed me that he's trying to rejoin the meeting. So if you could just be patient for a few minutes, it would be appreciated. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Mr. Kutu. Yeah, look, Thank I'm you. sorry. Uh, yeah, look, I'm sorry about that. I had a look, I have a network issue, so I'm just in this uh, big remote rural area. So um, I just hope, look, I was thinking maybe the connection was not going to give in, so but uh, it looks like, yeah. But what I can do now is let me just uh, try to wrap up as quick as possible and then, um, you know, and then let's see how this network is going to be. Let me just uh, proceed. Let me load my slide and then. Can you see my slide? No, Mr. Kutu, it's only a black screen. OK, we can see it now. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much. Um, really so, so sorry about that. Let me see where. OK, um, yeah. I was on the definition of a thing, then I was saying that uh, it is a legal object, which is um, which is an independent part of the in, of the uh, corporate world, and then it's external to humans, and then it's subject. It must be able to be controlled by 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 human beings, and then it must be uh, valuable and uh, useful. So the definition is in page eighteen, and then uh, with regard to uh, things. You know, like uh, things can be classified, uh, you know, like they're the ones that that you call um, negotiable. You know, those those are the ones that can be that can be that can be uh, triggered. And then there are those ones that we call uh, non negotiable. So look at page 21 and 22 on the discussion of uh, that that classification. So um, I'm going to go. To, OK. Um, Uh, let's go to um, with regard to those classification of things. There is uh, those look. Uh, there is these different types of things. We then we have the singular composite, and then you have fruits, natural fruits, and then the civil fruits. Uh, the most important one here is what we call uh, the movable and immovable things. This one is very much important because 
um, you need to know this thing as to at what point is a a thing movable and whether is a thing movable and whether the movable thing uh, that movable thing now had been converted from being movable to immovable and vice versa. So this one is very much important. Please look into uh, that one in um, page 23-24. But uh, let, just to give you a sneak, uh, you know, like a slight discussion there, then uh, immovable things, you know, it consists of land and everything that is permanently attached to land. So the moment you see immovable things, just know that those things, they must be attached to land, you know. Um, and then you have like, I mean, buildings and then, you know, like, because those things, they can be attached to land. And then we have, mo look, we have movable things. Those are the things that can be moved from one place to the other, you know, like, so uh, you need to know this, you, you know, like the definition of movable as well as immovable things. And then this one is very much important for the purpose of your you know, like this module, this one is one of the most important ones. And then also have fungible, uh, fungible, non-fungible, then you have, you know, like those ones, then you can look at um, page 21 to 25. Now, you need two. On this, you need two, then we're going to talk about uh, real rights, personal and personal rights. Personal rights is what you call creditors or uh, creditors' rights or claims. Now, um, Personal rights, like let me start with with uh, personal rights. Personal rights, they come from an obligation. You know, like uh, that, uh, that obligation is going to come from a, like, for example, contract delict or, or uh, unjust enrichment. So um, now, I think somewhere in one of the previous um, slides, I actually made a reference to the definition of what is a real right? So I don't think I have to go uh, back there for the sake of time and my issue of uh, of a uh, of a network or so. But now um, I want to state this particular important thing to say: um, as a source of law, like the Roman Dutch law, they make a distinction between the personal rights as well as real rights. You know, and, and then and then. Um, with regard to a uh, real right, because uh, the Roman Dutch law as part of the source of South African law, you know, it makes, you know, like uh, they specify as to what are, you know, like a uh, real right. So there is like, we call it a closed system because it can tell you specifically which are like, um, you know, like real rights, you know, like it can mention them. But now, However, the problem with that system of uh, what you call the closed system of uh, uh, real rights is because you have now, you know, like uh, there, 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 there are other rights that are being created. You know, and then sometimes it actually makes it a bit of a problem to say, this is a new right that has been created. For example, your, for example, your mineral rights. So then the question is, if there's a new right that has been created, is it now going to fall under um, personal right or real right? So that's why now this system, like this uh, Roman Dutch law system can now have, you know, like that, that is one of its, um, you know, like disadvantage, especially when it comes to categorization of uh, what you call uh, uh, real right. So now there is this, um, you know, there is this discussion on, on the, on at what point can you now say a right is a personal right or it's a real right? Like I said, because of the fact that, um, because of the fact that um, uh, uh, that system can now, um, you know, uh, because it's now closed, because it has not kicked up for the new rights. Now, the question is, if ever there are new rights that have been created, how do we now classify them as as um, as uh, real rights or even personal? So there, there are several theories that were developed to actually try to deal with, uh, you know, try to determine as to whether a right can be a, a personal right or a real right. So there are this personal, look, there's different, um, 
theories that are that have been advanced, so it's personalist, then it's classical, or whatever. But if you go to page 35, uh, to 33 and 35, then you can, you know, work on those. You know, just go through those theories. The most important one that you have to know is the one that is called subtraction from the dominion test. This one, it's it's. You have to know it also for exam purposes. Now, this particular test, like this particular test, was actually used to determine as to um, as to what is a real right or or like or like what is a personal right. So, there's this case called ex parte held in Hayes. This is this is the main case that is dealing with the diff with the with the with the um, difference between um, real right and personal right. Just to give you a little bit of a background, uh, in this case, what happened is you have parents who were owning a farm, so and then they created a will to say, in our will, when the first born uh, child uh, attains the age of majority, that child must now sub like now subdivide the farm into different portions for every child to to now inherit and then uh, the person like and then on the farm there was a what you call farmstead let's say a house also so now in terms of the provisions of the will then it says the child who is going to inherit that uh, farmstead must now compensate the other uh, children where look uh, those children where their subdivided portions do not have the that uh, homestead now in this particular case now the problem was now like let's say like now what are those children like what type of rights are those uh, are those children heavy you know so but in terms of this case like just to cut the story short you have to look at this particular page three uh, 36 or so what the court said is because of the fact that uh, the eldest child decided to take the farm the farm state like let's say the house in their farm you, you cannot say uh, those uh, those uh, other children's right against um, the against the eldest child can be a real right they cannot be real right so now what happened is because of the fact that uh, they look they need to now do the transfer to those one now what type of rights are those children having? Or like, let's say if now, because of the fact that uh, that particular homestead it is having a title deed, now, can we now put that condition in the title deed to say, because the eldest child has inherited the house, uh, which is having the farmstead, now that, 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 now that eldest child must now, um, you know, like, let's say, oh, you know the rest of the children that particular that particular amount of money now what happened is um the court said that right of those other children it's personal right so if it's personal like uh it, look if it's personal it cannot be registered in the title deed of that particular piece of land right but now because of the fact that that right to inherit that particular piece of land, as well as the fact that the child who is going to inherit the farm state must now compensate the other children because of those two rights, they are now um, linked. They need to go together. Now, the court said this is the only exception that we can allow the registration of a personal right in the title deed. So that is more of the essence of that particular case. On just just to add on this particular definition, uh, look on this debate on what type of rights. Uh, look, I mean, is a right personal, or or is it uh, real? So this case is very much important. I'm saying, please go through this one in page um, 36. Uh, let me check my next slide. Yeah. So for me, that is that is the presentation for unit one and two. Uh, I'm going to pause here and then I'm going to try to look at some of the 
questions that were raised in the discussion. Uh, Dr. Kevitz? Yes, Mr. Kutu? Uh, did you see any questions or? Um, Mr. Kutu, I haven't actually seen anything that is the, um, theoretically um, specific, theory, okay. but um, if you could just, when you are, are done with your, your presentation, um, you, can you just um, announce the announcements which you've um, made earlier prior to beginning your presentation, um, please, Mr. Kutu, because there's some students who joined late and who didn't catch the information that you've um, provided in the beginning of the session. Uh, oh, you, 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 mean, you mean that one of um, Prof. Knobel? Yes, that's correct, Mr. Kutu. Okay, no, it's fine. Let me just run through them very quick. Uh, the first one was the issue of uh, regarding the examination, uh, because the previous years, because of this corona, you know, pandemic or so, because we actually caught off guard also. So what we did is we we now opted for multiple choice questions. So there were 50 questions that were uh, worth a hundred marks, but now the system is not going to change. There's not going to be look. There's no. There won't be any uh, multiple choice questions. It's going to be short, and you know, like um, we have to give short, uh, short or long answers here. So unfortunately, the multiple choice question exam fell off. So there's no way that you're going to get those ones unless we experience another crisis, but for now, as things stand, no multiple choice question for the exam. Number two is the issue. Uh, we have received several emails regarding assignment two not being available. So because of this, you know, like system glitches like recently. So what's going to happen is we are trying to deal with some of the, um, you know, like we are trying to deal with the issue of assignment two, but we will now grant an extension uh, with regard to the uh, due date of that assignment. Of that assignment. So uh, we'll grant that extension. The, say, uh, the third one is the issue of um, marking of uh, assignment one. Like I said, we're having over 3,000 students, so it's a very huge number. And then we have different markers. So as things stand, we are busy trying to mark those uh, assignments and as soon as uh, we are done or maybe like did a greater percentage of marking then we can now uh, release some of the results. So that is that is what I got from uh, Prof. Knobel. Uh, also with the issue of, of uh, model system, um, listen, it's a new, look, it's a new system to us. So some of us are also struggling. So it's actually understandable if, if if the students are also struggling, but uh, however, you know, unfortunately, that is a, that is a that's that is a university's decision. So it's a model system. So we are learning it, and then we will get it right. So you you are also going to be uh, using it, and you are also going to experience uh, some of the tech, tech, technical glitches like we do. So unfortunately, we as lecturers, there isn't much we can do. But we're hoping maybe as time goes, then they will get the system right, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very uh, much, Mr. Kutu. And yeah, thank you uh, for your informative presentation as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm thinking um, if the student like like to have that presentation of mine, uh, I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, like posting it either on the announcement or um, or maybe on these meetings, um, you know, like I can put the link of, like the link of this, um, presentation to uh, look, look for a student to access. But just as a warning, this is not extensive because you need to consult the manual that that a study guide. You need to read the study guide for you to present. So this one was just an overview of uh, most important concept that you need to be looking at. Hence, I was constantly saying, please read page whatever in, in the guide because it's very much important that you consult the uh, study guide. This one was just an overview. So even if I can show you Prof. Knobel's uh, presentation, it's actually thick, thinner than mine. So she was just, you know, like directing you what is it that you need to do. So uh, so we can post both mine as well as uh, 
Prof Knobel, but just make just do not take that one as if it's a document that you need to read. You need to go and read the study guide for you to be able to understand uh, some of the concepts in this uh, module so that you can do well uh, during the examination. Yeah. Mr. Kutu, there is a question from Ms. Carlin. Can I read it to you? Not a problem. OK, it says about the difference between possession and holdership. Can one not also say that illegal squatters have unlawful physical control with the intention of deriving a benefit? That one, it should be. It should be. Um, I remember. Um, Remember a couple of days ago when we were do, doing this, uh, that um, that um, case law discussion, there was a court case that dealt with um, that 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 dealt with the like um, the rights, uh, uh, um, what do you call the legal rights of the squatter of the illegal. Look, let's call them illegal occupiers to say. Do they have look? Uh, uh, um, what rights do they have? So the look, it was a court case that dealt with that issue, but I don't think I need to go um, through it now. But I can look, look. If the student wants, then I can just uh, show, uh, look and post the link. But in, look, illegal occupiers, they should be somehow. Um, form part of uh, what you call um, possessors. Because remember, they do not have the owner's permission. And then and then uh, and then um, they are now deriving that benefit. What is that benefit? That benefit is to now occupy that land and stay there and then call it home. That is that is that benefit that they have. so so um, uh, so uh, um, um, illegal Oh, sorry, unlawful occupiers, they are going to form part of what you call um, possessors, not uh, not holders, possessors, sorry, sorry. They're going to be possessors, not um, not holders. Yeah, that's, that's how it's supposed to be. Thank you, Mr. Kutu. Uh, I see a question here regarding the issue of um, invigilator app. Look, it's not yet being communicated, but it's it's most likely going to be used. It's most likely going to be used. So just have that one in mind, but just wait for formal uh, formal announcement. Yeah. Um. Yes, there will be another class for this module. Yeah. Look, I see a couple of hands, so um, I'm not sure if uh, you want to take them. Um. OK, Mr. Kutu, I can let me just have a look. Mr. Vincent Masha, Mashava Tanga. I hope I pronounced it correctly, sir. You may proceed. Yes, thank you so much. Good morning. Morning. Uh, I wanted to ask about the the exam on the short and long questions. Are we going to get a, a question paper where we can write our answers? Is, is it going to be a question paper with an answer sheet or we'll have to log out and go type it somewhere else and then we upload it? OK, you know what? The only one, I don't have an answer then. I think uh, Prof Knobel can put, uh, uh, can put, um, can actually put the announcement, but for me, I don't see how it's supposed to look. Um, you know, you have to fill in, you know, on certain spaces because because what we'll need is we will need you to type. You know, like mostly like we prefer typing. So I don't see, it, uh, you know, like what I think is going to happen is there will be a question and then you have to um, download it and then, you know, you use your Microsoft Word and answer and then upload those those answer so maybe there'll be those few who might have issues with uh, typing or so maybe some of them they might use uh, you know like a handwritten you know uh, submissions or so 
Now, if that is the case, then it's still fine, I think. But for now, it's going to be like uh, those questions, and then you're going to um, download and then answer, and then you're not going to upload that that answer script, and then that's how that's how we're gonna mark, yeah. But uh, but I mean, like I'm saying, uh, Prof will now, um, you know, um, upload, uh, um, post, post announcements. But for the purpose of this presentation, just to be clear, I don't want to talk much about the issue of the exam. For me, I was actually confined to you know to unit one and two. So that is what I want. So most of the questions regarding examination and stuff, I think they can be resolved for. Uh, 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 for a you know, like future date, and then we also we are going to now, if ever there's developments or if ever there's exams, exam instructing, we are going to upload, look, post them on the exam, uh, look or on the announcement for you to be able to know. We we will do it, like I'm saying, like way before the way way before the examination. Yeah. So I don't want to take, uh, you know, like answer most of the things. Um, Regarding the examinations also, so I think I tried to you know try to deal with the issue of uh, the availability of assignment two as well as the marking of the of uh, exam of a uh, assignment one. So I think a prof will now communicate some of the issues when she comes back. Um, Mr. Kutu, there is a question, a raised hand from Ms. Marco. Ms. Marco, you may proceed. Yes. Um. Good morning. Um, my question is because someone asked a question regarding um, unlawful occupiers. So I wanted to clarify something. If, for example, um, people have occupied someone's land or someone's property without their permission, they become pos uh, possessors because it's always unlawful. And That's if... Funny. Should I start? No, it's fine. Please, please uh, proceed. And then they become holders if they occupy the land with the permission. But then if they are told to move out, they refuse to move out. Then they become unlawful holders. I don't know if I'm correct. No, uh, remember, if they had prior permission, then they are going to be uh, 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 holders, right? But once that permission is withdrawn, and then they don't leave, then instead of them now, like now, because of the fact that the occupation was initially uh, lawful, so you don't um, put them as um, possessors, but you're not going to put them as what you call um, bona fide uh, bona fide holders. No, no, so okay. no, so. They are not going to be called malafide uh, um, holders. Uh, yes, yeah, because they had look, they had a permission previously, so now because it, because now it has been withdrawn, and then they still want to derive that benefit of being there. So they are now going to be from now uh, just uh, they are not going to be uh, converted to what you call. Uh, malafide um, possessors. But now let me just give you an example. If the people are now going to occupy that land, right, and then you find that they had, look, they had, uh, look, they thought they had the permission. Maybe like you find that the permission was given by the wrong person. Now, now like those people are now going to be called um, um, bona fide possessors. Why? Because they thought they had the permission only to find that the permission was either incorrectly given. Yeah, 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 no, because of the fact that that because uh, that particular um, permission was withdrawn. The very same thing is going to happen to a person like, let's say, if you've entered into a lease agreement with uh, the landlord, then that lease agreement, it has now expired, but you are not quite aware. The moment that lease expired, then you are still there under the impression that you are the lessee, then you are now, although you are the so-called lessee, but however, because of the fact that that lease has expired, and then you you thought it has, look, because you because you are not aware that it has expired, then you're going to be um, uh, um, 
uh, be called a, the the um, they are bona fide, you know, like bona fide. But the moment you like them, look, the moment you had a permission, and then that permission is withdrawn, and you knew about it, but you still persist on wanting to derive that benefit, then you are now, you know, like converted to a malafide uh, a holder. But the moment you know that, uh, um, let's say, that list it has expired, but I'm still going to stay, then you're going to be malafit. So those two technical things are very much important. Yeah, do know as to at what point does the person know that uh, they're not supposed to be there vis-a-vis -vis when the particular person thought they thought they have the permission. So that is the key that you also need to be like, just go through that uh, those pages in the guide to understand the difference between the two. Yeah. OK, noted. Yeah, um, the look, this presentation is supposed to take an hour. So um, because we are now. Two minutes away, so I see there's a there's a hand, so I'm not sure how if this thing is going to take long, but I will prefer to close this meeting at around 11 or at least uh, three minutes past 11. So let's see if ever. Let's see how is saving question. Let's see how. I think that's an historical hand, um, okay. Mr. Bidu. OK, then it's fine then. Unfortunately, I don't think we can take all these particular um, um, questions, but I think, well, look, I think um, if ever you feel that there's something that you need clarity on, then I think you can send emails. However, I'm actually on leave, so I'm just doing this thing while on leave. So. You can now send a look. If you have a couple of questions, then you can send um, those questions via our via our emails, and then we can now respond. Because uh, to now answer those questions uh, on this platform, then it's actually going to take too much time. So I think if ever there's something that you need clarity on, then you can just uh, send an email, and then we can try to deal with them. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Kutu. Um, thank you very much. And best wishes, students, with your studies. OK, uh, thank you, students. I think we, we have reached the end of our presentation. Like I said, I'm going to look uh, apologies regarding that, um, you know, that technical glitch there. So I think I did my best. What I'm going to do is. Um, now what I'm now what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this um this uh powerpoint presentation that i did just just for students just to get an overview before they they do um uh, before they study or maybe like just to confirm some of the things that they studied so i'm just gonna be curious and just uh post that uh, that announcement so uh, yeah so um, i would like to say thank you very much for attending um i am going to end my presentation here Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kutu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.